Don't touch that dial. It's Leo Valdez. Give him the skibbity paps. David Sintra. Where is this guy coming from? And Hunter Horn. Man, I'm tired of being right. With your pregame warm up. Yo, DJ, drop that beat. Hey, everybody, and welcome. Hunter, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Leo. You know, it's uh, it's a little unfortunate that Dave's under the weather, but, you know, we're here to carry the torch. That's right. We're going to carry this burden. And here's a beautiful thing about the pregame warm-up. We are available on YouTube. You can watch us at Pregame WP. Just look us up, and we're there. And we're also doing some work on trying to move our Instagram followership up so we want you guys to follow us on instagram that's at the official pgw and to do this we've got a little something for you guys hunter go ahead and explain it to the folks out there all righty guys well if you head over to the at the official pgw on instagram right and you go ahead and you head to our pin topics you'll see a post about a 50 dollar amex gift card all you got to do is tag three people and follow the page and you will be entered for a chance to win. It's that simple. It's easy money. And not to mention, we, we've got, you know, some pretty cool locks and sports betting advice over on the Instagram daily for you guys to check out. I just hit an $1,100 parley last night on a, just a couple easy picks. We don't really make bets. We just make easy money. That's right. That's what we do here, right? <laughs> I love it. Love it. And speaking of easy money, a lot of people had their money on the Eagles Chiefs Super Bowl. And I had my money on the Eagles because I was really hoping for their defense to show out. Now, that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to basically, before Hunter goes and, and berates me, um, I, I want to make some things clear for the record. Okay. And for the record, I don't think Jalen really lost the game. I think he just lost hope especially when they only had 10 seconds left to try and win the game. Yes, he could have thrown a Hail Mary, but I think his hopes were kind of dashed because his defense let him down. His defense did not do the job they were going to. On a fantasy day, if you had Jalen on your team, you were going to get 38 good, solid points. He threw for 304 yards. He ran for three touchdowns. He threw for one. He, had, he did have that fumble, and yes, I mean, this is what you expect out of a two-year man in the league. I really did think he did an amazing job, but in the end, his defense really let him down and gave opportunities to what is true about a very amazing and could be one of the greatest of all time quarterbacks in Patrick Mahomes. So I'm more upset at the Eagles defense than I am at Jalen not winning. At, I'm, I'm sorry. I understand the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. Like I said, it wouldn't have surprised me if they did, but the way that they did was because the Eagles decided that in the second half, they definitely didn't want to play defense. Hunter, I, I know you really want to come after me. I'll let you, but you can't tell me that I'm 100% wrong. Well, you know, around here, we've always said it. We're here to poke some holes, this, that, the other. Jalen had a great game, okay? Jalen had a great game up until that last play, and I'm definitely taking that last play to the woodshed, so I won't go too much into it now because we're definitely going to get into it later. But, man... It really boils down, if you really want to be, I guess, controversial, it really boils down to whether or not you think the refs should have let that holding call slide or not. Because without that holding call, the Chiefs have to kick a field goal, and then the Eagles are getting the ball back. And, you know, Jalen Hurts got about a minute, 48 seconds to work with. That's plenty of time to come down the field. I mean, neither defense really put up much of a fight against either offense. That's this is really... It was it was it was like rock of sock and robots out there back and forth and back and forth. It, so it, I can't it really, really was. Jalen. I really can't fault Jalen Hurts. I mean, especially since your team only lost by three points. That's that's not on you, man. And that's one of the remarkable things I actually wanted to mention, because believe it or not, you were more spot on in the pick when you picked 34 31 for the Kansas City Chiefs. You were the closest one. But it was funny that Dave, you and me picked this game to be decided by three points. So I think that we did see that there were the best teams in the NFC and the AFC actually playing 
in the Super Bowl. Well, we knew it was going to come down to that final possession, whoever had the ball last. And usually when, you know, those there are those type of games, it's a three-point game because the final team gets the ball and then they'll wind the clock down till the other team has nobody else, no chance to do anything. Because teams have become shell-shocked. Given to the score touchdown with 40, 50 seconds left, right? And everybody's celebrating. And then the other team will come down and they'll throw four or five quick passes all to the outside on the on the sidelines. And then they'll kick a field goal and tie it up or even take the lead. All right. Well, I'll ask this question then. I know Patrick Mahomes won the Super Bowl MVP. You're probably going to stick by that or stand by that. I don't think so. I think somebody who throws for less than 200 yards and... 40 yards of rushing offense really wouldn't have if 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 Patrick Mahomes doesn't win the Super Bowl I think a lot of people start to question whether or not he should have even played injured however I'll say that he deserves it because he gave that he played hurt he played while when the chips were down he gave it that 100% that's what makes him so great he did attribute it to his own greatness but I wouldn't declare him the actual MVP. What about you? Well, I mean, the MVP is always going to come from the team that won the Super Bowl. Because don't get me wrong, I think Jalen played well enough to be the MVP, even with the losing effort. He didn't play bad. That last play, I really don't think that was his fault. Okay, we, Everybody forgets that Jalen Hurts came into this game with a bogged up shoulder anyways. So to ask him to throw it 70 yards down the field when he, you know, doesn't usually do that anyways, it's kind of a big ask. I was more kind of like, where are the laterals at? Where's the misdirection, the confusion, you know? Do something spicy out there. It's the Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, but to I'm... answer your question, to right. answer your question, dude, what Mahomes did was special, Leo. Like, not to not to fanboy over him, but he came in off of one of the like ugliest looking high ankle sprains I've seen in a long time. The fact he played through it was just phenomenal. And then, you know, Leo, he didn't have great stats, but you know what? When he re-rolled that ankle, he came in that next play, and it was like third and 18, and he had a 26-yard uh, QB scramble up the middle, and – that right there, you know what that is, Leo? That may not win you the game right there, but that's a tone setter. Because right. now this guy, you just saw him screaming on the sideline. He just came out and just dropped it in your mouth again. There's, It's it's like, what what do we have to do to stop this guy? It starts to demoralize you as a defense. And I yeah, think that's yeah, what no, happened. Because momentum does matter. I, I, I'll give you that. I think that the actual MVP is, honestly – his offensive line, because the offensive line really they did, did a great through. job. They did their job, especially right at that last moment when it really mattered. They didn't commit any holding penalties. They stayed true. They held down. They didn't do what the Eagles did. And that's why I think the Eagles coughed it up with that holding play at the end. And, and James Bradbury and I'll have a few words about that. However, and he I said it. He said he, he gave a tug. He said he gave a tug on the jersey, thought he was gonna, you know, was gonna get let go. You know, so it makes you it makes you wonder. I mean, listen, I'm all for letting the guys play and this and that, but ooh, these guys set rules and abide by the rules. And if you have rules, if you don't call the rule, isn't that a form of cheating too? True. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I everybody wants to get on it and be like, <laughs> how can you call a hold? But Bradbury said, yeah, I tugged him. So it's more of, you know, right. Bradbury, why are you going to put your hands on him? Why are you going to put exactly. the referee Especially in when you position? knew the ball was going to be overthrown. Absolutely. And, and, there, was, and, and, there, was, there was no reason for it. We'll, we'll, like I said, I'll, I'll get that to that later. And when we come back after this quick commercial break, we'll be talking about the NFL and all the recent moves that are being made. And we'll see if somebody can find a home for my car. Here on the pregame warm-up, and there's so much going on 
in the offseason that has unofficially started. Um, the NFL offseason really doesn't start till March 15th, and it usually is marked by the beginning of the combine. However, this is the time when teams will clean house. Hunter, what have you noticed about the league right now? Well, right now, Leo, I honestly, I feel bad for them Eagles fans. They got mm-hmm. they got cleaned out. Both their defensive and their offensive coordinators are gone. I believe they lost their linebackers coach too. So it'll be interesting to see if the Eagles will be able to, you know, get back into the deep postseason. You know, they had quite an easy schedule this year and uh, a pretty easy run in the playoffs, if you ask me. So that that's a pretty big shakeup. It'll be interesting to see how Jalen does with someone else calling the plays. Right. Well, I I know that they're I know Sirianni's staying, and some people think that that's like that that this that all of these firings are basically him cleaning the house because of the loss. But I think it's because in reality, their defensive coordinator he just got picked up by the Arizona. Well, yeah, Chargers. none of them were fired. These guys just were offered head he coaching offered, jobs. Exactly. You're gonna always take a head coaching job. It's more money. Exactly. And so I I see that this is just people. If I, if I were the Eagles, if I were Eagles fans, I'd feel I feel kind of slighted because then that means that you used my team as a stepping stone and oh, not yeah, to build exactly. up. The well, that was franchise. like. Well, well, that was like Ron Rivera. You know, another thing I noticed, right? And we'll we'll just have a little joke here, right? Okay, <laughs> Ron 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 Rivera must have been, you know, doing some some ayahuasca with Aaron Rodgers or something, because he goes and says, "Eric Bieniemy should come be my offensive coordinator over here in Washington. He'll definitely <laughs> become a head coach then. Like if he should leave the Chiefs where he's won Super Bowls." And and right. take less money with a less talented team. <laughs> well, no, as, as some some people will say, especially Chiefs fans are probably calling for a change at the defensive coordinator position because of how many yards Jalen Hurts had through the air, because of the fact that in reality, if it's not for the fact that the def- their defense messes up, the Eagles do win that Super Bowl, and that's Steve Spagnuolo. You're talking about, you know, he's got some Super Bowl rings. He's got some. So I'm behind, and so for fans to call for for Spagnolo's head, you know, that's that is kind of an odd thing to do. But then again, it's can you get your players to come over? Can you get the right players for your schemes? And if you think that you can do a better job in a different organization because they have every team has a different amount of cap space that they can use, every team has different ownership that will back them up in in different directions. A team I have not heard anything from this past three weeks has actually been the Cowboys. Uh, it's been quite over. It's been quiet over in Jerry World. Well, Mike um, Mike came out and said that there's going to be like thirty percent changes or something, and then Dak was like, "Yeah, I like change." So <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if they they're talking about the same change, but the Cowboys <laughs> will have some change. They just yeah, they're, I think- they're, they have to go about it slow because you have to remember that anytime Jerry does anything, it's going to be on ESPN. That's so right. Jerry has to Jerry has to be calculated with how he does things because if Jerry okay just goes out and says goodbye Zeke, goodbye Pollard, goodbye Dak, right, and keeps McCarthy. You, you, you know, I don't have to tell you what the headline's going to be on ESPN. You already know. And you fellas listen at home, you already know what it's going to be, too. <laughs> yeah, so, no, that's true. That's true. He has to wait, and they, they have to do things right, where it's almost like he's got to have almost like that come out and say, yeah, you know, think it's best if I leave on my own terms almost, you know, so that people don't have a conniption with him. And well, I, uh, yeah, that sucks. I, I feel bad for Jerry because he can't run his team the way he wants to run it. But at the same time, he's, you know, he well, the only reason himself. he keeps Mike McCarthy around is because Mike McCarthy is a yes man for him. Well, yeah, but, that's and, duh. And the, and the truth is, is that I know that he's been wanting a change um, at quarterback because technically Mike will probably argue with him that it's still it's still the previous coach. It's still man. I, I'm drawing a blank on the man's name. For crying out loud, he's he's actually Garrett, Garrett Millard or something, right? Wasn't it no, Jason no, Garrett? No, it, 
um, Jason Garrett. He's the <laughs> offensive coordinator for the New York Giants, and I completely forgot him, his name, you know. But but it, he could still argue that it's Garrett's team, you know, and say, well, you know, th- there still needs to be a bit of a shakeup. But Mike's had a few years in. He should have. Mike's had a few years. If, if he didn't want Dak in the first place, but they should have re- renegotiated year? his contract. But can- but can you really count the previous year with Dak as a year? Because Dak broke his leg halfway through the year and was done. So can you really? Well, you count can't even that? count. You can't even count this year. In reality, the man dislodged his entire hand. I know they say it's just his thumb. I know, but I, I don't know. I think for for Dak, his his best season in the league was his first season because it proved that Jerry Jones can always pick winners. He did not pick. Dakota Prescott. It was not in his privy to do it, but whatever. We're talking about the Cowboys too much. The fact is, is that they really haven't done anything. And you know what? I think that's sometimes a good thing because that probably means that everybody's meeting in quiet, in secret, saying we're going to make some changes, but we have to start getting with a game plan that brings a winning culture. Who knows? Maybe that's what they're doing, or maybe they've got Michael Irvin giving you know motivational speeches during the offseason. It makes you wonder, man. It makes you wonder. <laughs> I, I think, you know what? I think I'm going to take a cue from Dave. I'm going to make a bold prediction to say that this offseason is going to have a, a plethora of offseason moves. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree with that 100%. I think the entire landscapes are going to change. Divisions are going to look different. You know, let, let me tell you, let me bring up one thing real quick. OK, let's let's talk about that tight end situation down south in South Florida. Right. Okay? Okay. Listen to this. This this could be this could be a wild one. Right. So the Dolphins. Right. You know, Gasecki wants to pack up and hit the road and this, mm-hmm. that, the other. And you've got I, I really like this Irv Smith Jr. from the Vikings. Right. And you got Dalvin Cook who wants to wants to be traded out of Minnesota. He doesn't want to take a pay cut. He, he wants to go to. So I think I think the Dolphins should really target Minnesota here and try and get try and get either Cook or Irv from them, man. You know, a solid one cut explosive running back or a blocking tight end. You know, for that run scheme that McDaniel's likes. It, it all depends on on what the Dolphins really can afford to do, um, because as you know, they're they're not going to be looking to get rookies. Because their, right, their right. entire draft stock is has been pilfered for the for the next two seasons, but I think um, as far as you saying that there's going to be monumental changes coming in the off season in the NFL is almost an understatement because it all started, and it, in reality, the biggest move in the off season so far is that the Raiders have parted with Derek Carr, their quarterback, and the man has no home. Where do you think he's going to land? I think if Derek Carr's smart. He'll go tell the Jets yesterday that he wants to be their their quarterback. Now, listen, I'm a Dolphins fan. I'm not trying to make my division any harder than it already is with the Bills, and then the Patriots are always annoying. Annoying, you know. So, so Derek Derek's coming into a strong division. Don't get me wrong, but the Jets are built, man. Listen, Brees Hall is going to be back with his bionic knee running harder than ever. They've got Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore out wide so they've got nice offensive weapons to throw to they've got a solid offensive line and then they've had an elite defense man they've got a defense that can hold teams to 20 points a game you know and g- give you that ability to win right right so i think that's the best landing place for Derek Carr. if he's smart he'll snatch that up before aaron Rodgers does okay i think if if he really wants to be taken serious as a quarterback he needs to go where they treat quarterbacks like a serious commodity. Um, and that would be Pittsburgh. That would be going to the Steelers. And Tomlin will have to admit that, you know, Pickett's not his guy. And, I, don't and think so. said, I, I don't think I don't see Tomlin ever doing that. Correct. So that would be an ideal place for him to land. But let's face it, Carr is not going to land in a starting spot. I don't think he will. Um, the the only starting spots he has is the Jets and the Panthers, and I don't think he wants to go to and Carolina. The Saints. And, and the Saints. I don't you know, think he wants to end you, up in the AFC that, South. That NFC South is probably the best place he wants to go because it's the weakest division. 
It's where he'll start. It's where he'll start if he joins. It'll be either the Bucks, the Falcons, oh, the, Bucks. the Saints. Think about or the it. Panthers. The Bucks, the Falcons, the Saints, and the Panthers all need a quarterback. They right. All, but they, I, I don't see him actually getting a starting job anywhere else other than those places. Oh, and yeah, he has yeah, to yeah. really think do you really want to go to teams that are rebuilding? Well, sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you have to be part of the rebuild. I don't you know. know. I've, Listen, I, I've seen that too many times, and I've seen that kill careers. I've seen that almost kill of, careers with Kurt Warner when he went to well, the Giants during well, their rebuilding season. Well, well, look what Derek Carr just did to poor Devontae Adams, bro. I mean, listen, Devontae made a lot of money going to the Raiders, right? But if I was Devontae Adams' mama, I'd be like, don't you ever pick up that man's phone call again. He almost got you killed on a rafting trip, and I took you away from a Super Bowl-winning team. <laughs> well, I don't know. The the I don't I I don't think Devontae staying in Green Bay gets him a Super Bowl. Really? You don't think you don't think Green Bay that for the last four or five years with that combo have won double digit seasons every year been in the playoffs? Double digit seasons, but how many Super Bowls? But they'll be in the playoffs. Anything can happen in right, the playoffs. Right. I no, think like the I NFC said, I can been, agree with them the building NFC a postseason been really team, weak this but not year. a Super Bowl team. No, the, you, Imagine their, their last year's Green Bay team. Under their defense in, in this was year's big. NFC, but I'm just saying. Imagine, imagine, imagine Devonte Adams and that defense is too beat up. <laughs> I'm glad that they have the offense. That's why they were getting into the postseason. But the defense did not make defense. Oh, too bad. <clears throat> Look up the stats. Tell me right now. What was the well, what was the what, Green Bay where Packers were, they were like the Green Bay Packers were, the Packers were top fifth. The Green Bay Packers were better on defense than the Dolphins. I'll tell you that much. I you don't know. Think so. And and as we can see, it didn't really matter if you had a defense or not this playoffs. It was all offense. Oh, actually Whoever it did matter if you longest. had a defense because if the defense plays the way they're supposed to play, then we're talking about different winners for the Super Bowl. So yes, defense does matter because the defense puts you in position, puts your offense in position to win a game. Right, right, right. But then, then it always, like I said, it comes back to the Leo, the the Eagles. If you look at their schedule, right, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the only time they really played a quarterback when he was having a solid week and he was having right, he was playing well. Was Dak Prescott when he hung forty on them and they lost mm -hmm. like forty to three to the Cowboys? Right. You know, so that that's what I'm saying. They they finally I'm not came saying, up against listen, a real I'm, quarterback in the playoffs finally in Patrick Mahomes, right. and the defense didn't matter. That we heard all about good defense, good defense, good defense. And I'm telling you that the Packers have had have always had a decent quarterback and wide receiver combo. And how many Super Bowl wins does Aaron Rodgers have? Oh no. Okay, so. There's truth to what you're saying because it does matter. I will say that it does matter. But it's a very had, integral part I'm just saying, of your they've system. They've always gone up against strong competition in the playoffs. This right. year was weak. This year was a weak NFC playoff. Listen, listen. I agree. It, it was. The, the Eagles were the best team to come out of the NFC. So mm -hmm. it is okay that, but the Eagles were not a strong team. Neither were the, but neither were the, the, the Chiefs, man. The Chiefs had Patrick Mahomes who played well with a bum ankle, but the Chiefs. The Chiefs gave up 35 points, too. Neither yeah. of these teams were really elite here coming down to the end. They were all worn down. This this year was filled with injuries. Yes. It was filled with injuries, and let's not forget for the past two years that the actual NFL season was extended an additional. Extended, so now all the – isn't it something that now they extend it, they play some more games, they start up their training camps earlier, and all of a sudden players suddenly and aren't number making two teams are playing the super, uh, And number two teams are actually playing in the playoffs. There's no two-team buys. It's only one yeah. team that gets a buy. Yeah, 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 no, I think these players, they're they're finally – I think by the time you get to a Super Bowl, you're playing with guys that have – they're running on empty. And so you're going to get the games that you get at the end where it's going to be down to three points, maybe six at the most. So I think it does make for better football. But, yeah, these guys, do they, they do need to take care of themselves. But as far as where Derek Carr lands, <laughs> which is where it goes, you think that he will get a starting job in the AFC South or the New York Jets? 
Well, yeah, either he's either headed to the NFC South or he's headed to the to the AFC East. But the thing is, is I I have to say the AFC because well, no, because the the Raiders are in the AFC, they're in the West. Correct. So I I really think honestly, if the Raiders are gonna, you know, if he's gonna go anywhere and the Raiders don't really care and all that stuff. And he's not he's trying gonna to end up in New York. I think he's going to the NFC, man. I really think. Okay. I really think the Jets are going to sit there and hold out for Aaron Rodgers because they really are one quarterback away. If they come to Derek Carr and they offer him the position, Derek would be stupid not to take it. But I think we see Derek Carr in a light blue and gray and black. White jersey, no <laughs> Panthers. <Rawr>. <laughs> All <laughs> right, so Derek Carr will probably end up in the AFC and the NFC South. Aaron Rodgers might end up in the AFC East. So much happening in the NFL offseason. We're so glad we can get to cover it for you here on your edition of the pregame warm up. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> We are back. We're going to talk a little bit about new rule changes coming to Major League Baseball right before the start of the season. We're already talking, before we even talk spring ball, we're already talking rules changes. The goal is to make the game a little bit faster. They've made it a little bit more difficult recently. Hunter, I'm going to say about baseball, I like it being a long game, but I am kind of glad that they're putting pitchers on a clock because I think that. They're not really playing the psychological game. I think they're playing psychological games with fans. Then, um, as far as the the rule change that goes with the pitching clock is what's known as shoring up, and that is when you when a pitcher passes, or sorry, when a pitcher throws the ball to a to a first baseman, second baseman, or third baseman. Usually, it's the first or third baseman. That's usually where they'll go. They're only giving you three per inning. If not, you're going to be actually, it, it will actually cause a uh, a runner to be moved up to a base. So if you throw it more than three times to first base, they're going to move the runner on first base over to second. It's a free walk. Um, what do you think about all these different rule changes, Hunter? Well, as a fan, I have to say, you know, I love, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, okay, everybody, but just hear me out. I love baseball. I get bored watching baseball. I love playing baseball. So these rules definitely affect those playing the game because I believe baseball, like you said, Leo, is psychological between the pitcher and the hitter. You can, they're really good hitters, and you can psych them out to where they don't hit the ball and you're not really throwing heat or anything. And the way you do that is, you know, especially if you got people creeping on base or whatever, and this whole new, you're limited to three. What happens if you use them up? Now these guys know they can steal bases or whatever. But as a fan, sometimes baseball games, they run a little long and they get a little boring. And I know there's the old dogs right now. And I, no, baseball's not boring. Blasphemy. But we all know that, you know, Baseball is not the most exciting, explosive sport 24-7. You know, the home runs are fun. And, you know, when these guys make the diving catches and whatnot, they're, they're great highlights to watch on ESPN, you know, when you're having your midnight snack before bed. <laughs> I think with the uh, when you're when you're when you're talking about the technicalities of a game, when you're looking at the possibilities of when you think you're being kind of pushed out, um, that it does mess with the pitcher's head. And when you're messing with the pitcher's head, you're messing with the pitch count. Um, when you're telling him, when, when you're restricting your pitcher, you're actually, you're not making the game faster. You're actually creating what you want. I believe what Major League wants is what you just said. 
you said home runs are fun. Yeah, home runs are fun, but when you're looking at it, it's going to mess with a class of player that no longer feels protected. So now you have pitchers out there scared to throw, scared to shore up, wanting to get into the head of a hitter. Instead, you're already in the head of the pitcher. And what you're going to end up creating is, yeah, you're going to have a lot of runs. You're going to have a game between the Royals and the Red Sox that ends with, you know, the, the, the score being 10 to 7, you know, or 15 to 11, things like that, because there's going to be a lot of hits and a lot of hits can always equal out to a lot of runs. You're also going to have a lot of errors because guys on defense are going to be playing on their toes all the time. And rather than being able to enjoy the game as as a player, you want to enjoy the game as well. You don't want to feel rushed. But uh, then again, they do it in football. They do it in basketball. Shoot, they even do it in hockey where, hey, you've got a power play, but you've got two minutes. Yeah, move. Move. on, Andale. <laughs> dale, dale. You know, I get dale, it. Dale, dale. Yeah. Throw the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I get it, but I think it's going to – I think it's going to change the way we're going to have to we're going to have to change the way we analytically look at baseball and then at the same time I think it's going to I think it's going to be a new era of baseball altogether. It's going to bring in a different kind of athlete and I think that's just that's just the commissioner's way of trying to kill the game as it is to try and create something new in my opinion. Yeah, I think they're going for something new. They see that that, you know, it, times are changing, man. Things are changing. Yep. You know, I know they want to bring a VAR to hockey. Right. So things are changing. <laughs> These times they are changing. They well, are changing. we're going to, speaking of change, we're going to change things up. When we come back from this commercial break, we're going to talk a little bit about the NCAA men's basketball because March Madness is right around the corner. And there's some questions we want to cover to see if maybe we're going to get our picks right when we look at that bracket. All that and more on your edition of the pregame warm-up. are back and we're going to be talking a little bit about the NCAA men's basketball right now it looks like the bracket is a little weird because it looks like it might be an SEC team taking it to the house for the bracket a lot of people though are talking about Kansas repeating and as far as the Florida team is concerned it's about the University of Miami actually not only making the bracket but actually being could be one of the final four Hunter what do you think about all that well, Leo, Alabama went ahead and they followed suit with all other eight number one choices in the AP poll this this basketball season so far, and that's losing as soon as they got ranked number one. Tennessee took them out. So Tennessee has both taken Alabama out in football and basketball this year. So yay for the Vols. So Alabama will probably drop down to like two or three if that. I really, you know, I don't understand how they rank these basketball teams because some of them, they go from like 10 to number four, and then some of them just stay at number seven the whole season long. So it's, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. All right. What well, I, what I really on. like, what I really like to look at, you know, is what you said about the Canes, Leo. These guys look serious. Okay, they've got Isaiah Wong and a few other talented big men, right? Okay, and they've been sticking the hurt to teams that have habitually, habitually put the hurt down on not only just the Canes themselves, but the SEC, the Big Ten, the Big Twelve, all this stuff. Duke, North Carolina, and don't get me wrong; these teams are kind of on their transition years, so they're not as strong. You know, Duke lost their their. Uh, Hall of Fame coach and whatnot. So I think the ACC is starting to shift a bit in power. But this Canes team is serious, man. I really think they can roll with, with some of the big dogs and at least make it to the Elite Eight. All right. I think that's understandable. Um, where I 
somewhat disagree with you as far as the ranking and not understanding them is because a team will um they'll be on a roll and it's all about being able to make that one uh last minute play or last second play in reality and when you're when you're dominating all of a sudden you look like you're the potential favorite and where you end up in the bracket because where you end up in the bracket is where you're probably going to end up um, on which side of the bracket. So you might be a number four team southeast, but you'll end up in Midwest at number two. You know, So it's all about where you're going to end up on which side of, of the bracket. So it's never it, – it's, it's about position within where you fall within – just making it to the first part of it. It is a confusing system because what one of the things that college basketball does right is that it gives everybody an opportunity to make the bracket. That doesn't mean that doesn't guarantee anything. Notre Dame is not going to make it for the first time in six years. They are not going to be on the bracket. Um, I don't see Kansas actually repeating uh, they've talked about it. This would be the first repeat since uh, the University of Florida did it in 07 and in 08. Um, it's 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 a harder thing to do. A lot of team, there's a lot of parity between the Big 12, the Big 10, the ACC, and the SEC. It's it's so spread out. The talent pool is so spread out that anybody can do anything dangerous at any time. So you telling me that the Hurricanes are dangerous to be on the bracket is absolutely true, but everything changes from week to week, from day to day, really. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, Leo, I've noticed that basketball is also one of those, it's, it's probably the easiest sport to come out and have a bad night. I've noticed that basketball teams, it's very easy. Like football, you'll have off games, right? But if you're a really, really good football team, your off games still are usually good enough to get you a win. Hockey, same thing. You have an off night, but if you're really good at what you're doing and, and stuff like that, it's not going to be too bad. Basketball, these guys go off and on like quite frequently. You know, yeah. Alabama was on a roll. They had won 12 straight and then all of a sudden just threw up 47 points against the Vols and lost by 36. So, right. Well, that that's something that does happen. That's um, a, a team will actually be on that roll, but then they'll finally figure out the rotation. They'll figure out how they're changing their their defensive pattern. Will go from a half court press to a three two, and you know, er, er, what they'll see how they make that transition, what players and where. So, but it takes teams a little while before they finally figure that out. And of course, right. that's that's I think in basketball more than any sport, especially in college, coaching definitely matters because they're the ones that are really directing what's going on. It's it's not hey uh, get open and get the ball and shoot it. It's it's every position, every way you play, and then making adjustments. Alabama has been figured out. Question: Can they actually re? adjust yeah, and readjust. not and, and and then be figured out for their readjustment if they don't readjust and they keep playing the same way they're playing then yeah you're right they're just going to keep tanking so that's i guess that's where i say coaching coaching matters an off night will only prove that everybody's got your number that's really what it is that's really what it is yeah no yeah. that's very true leo very very true all right, so we got some college basketball out of the way. The bracket does seem to be something that we are cheering for as we're going to get ready to make our March Madness picks. I think that'll be really interesting, especially to watch Dave get them all wrong. Right, Hunter? Oh, yeah. You, you already know. <laughs> That's right. We just we just kid each other here on the pregame warm-up, but we are so glad that you are listening. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at the official PGW. And you can also see us on YouTube at Pregame WP. Just go to YouTube, put that up on your search bar, hit us a like, and subscribe. You'll catch our show weekly. And you can also listen to us on WJAQFM.com slash play dash now and hear us at 5 p.m. Central Standard, 6 Eastern, on your radio or on your mobile device. And with that, we'll be right back to talk a little bit out of order and then 
we might take some interesting characters to the woodshed. All that and more on your pregame warm-up. And we are back with your pregame warm-up. Hunter, we talked a little bit earlier about all these teams making changes. You made a bold prediction. I actually back it up. I think that your prediction makes 100% sense, that there's going to be a lot of shaking and baking going on in the NFL offseason. Now that the Super Bowl is out of the way, we are going to cover the combine and we are going to cover the draft. However, I'm going to ask this question, which team in the AFC needs to make the biggest change? The biggest change and biggest improvement definitely needs to come from the Las Vegas Raiders, okay? Especially parting ways with Derek Carr. We talked about it earlier, but this would be huge. If the Raiders come out and they play even worse than they did this year without Derek Carr, they'll look even ter- they'll look even worse. Even especially if Derek Carr goes somewhere else and has a good season. The Raiders need to make improvements. They've got stellar wide receivers. They've got a monster in the backfield. They've got a solid offensive line. The defense, defense needs to pick it up. They gave up way too many points, way too many yards. But that is my AFC pick for most improved needing team. Well, I'm going to go ahead and ask uh, you really quick. Just give me a team out of the out NFC. Of, out of the NFC? Yeah. Most improved out of the NFC. The Vikings. Okay, I'm going to disagree with you. I'm going to say the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bucs. I'm going to say the Bucs because here's why I believe they need the most improvement. Because they prove that you can have one of the best players on your team, and it doesn't mean diddly squat. As a matter of fact, it can show how a team is affected by negative behavior off the field. The Bucs were in disarray now that Brady is gone. They're in further disarray. The fact is, is that a lot of people don't understand that Brady actually came into a good situation in Tampa. And when he retired last year, he was leaving when things were in a rebuilding stage. Now he was in a team that was rebuilding, rehashing old trash. And worst of all, he himself was having a lot of off the field drama. This does affect an organization in a negative light. If they don't fix something this offseason, Tampa Bay will have almost a decade to recover. And that's not where they want to be. They want to be where they were delivering consistency. After John Gruden left that team, it took them nearly a decade, if not over a decade, to get back on track. They can't go through that again. They won't keep their fan base if they do. This is the team that needs it the most. Not that... You're wrong about the Vikings. I think the uh, the Vikings do need to make vast improvements on their team, especially when they were slated really to go in the playoffs and give the Eagles a run for their money. They couldn't do the job. Kirk Cousins is proving again that he's just not that guy. I get it. They it, do need something, but I believe the Bucks need it more just to prove to the fan base that this is not going to be another 10-year rebuild. Well, I think it's the Vikings defense. Like Stefanski needs to go out and get somebody that really knows defense. Because the Vikings offense puts up enough points to win games. They just they can't keep you out of the end zone either. <laughs> That's true. I think the team in the AFC that needs the biggest change is actually the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike Tomlin needs to do something about keeping a well-balanced team together. It's either they're good on defense one week and then they're good on offense another week. There was too much going on. It was like he was trying to manage both sides of the ball week to week, so he was alternating it, and so there was a lot of inconsistency. So he needs to bring consistency back to that program. I think the Steelers do need it in the AFC. If not, they'll, they won't dominate that division for a while. I, I think the Steelers are a few years off of dominating for a while. I'll be honest with you, Leo. 
but I can't be too hard on Tomlin for what he had to work with this season and what he did. I got to give it to him, man. Right. But the buck does stop with him. With It does stop with him. He cannot be the one to be the only one doing it. That's why you have a team. And that's, that's why you true. have multiple coaches underneath you so that you can delegate those responsibilities. But when you have no one reliable to delegate those responsibilities to and you're constantly having to deal with it, that means you're dealing with the consequences of your bad decisions. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, we're going to go ahead and take this moment to say thank you for listening. And again, Hunter, I really want to do another call to action here with our Instagram page. That's at the official PGW. One more time, just repeat how people can sign up for this $50 Amex card giveaway. Yeah, if you guys head over to the page, you'll see the post about the uh, raffle giveaway for a $50 Am Amex card. Uh, you just go ahead and tag three of your friends or three random people and follow the page and post it up onto your story and you'll be entered to win the raffle. It's going to be in one week from today. And we'll go ahead and get that off to all of you as a show of support for all the support you guys show us. All right. So thank you guys very much. And we will be right back after this. You're listening to your pregame warm up. And we're back with a pregame warm up. And before we get to our favorite part of the program, I just want to remind you guys that we are trying to expand this program to do it multiple times a week. But to do that, we need your support. We need your help. So go ahead and give us a follow on our YouTube page at pregame WP. Just look us up, give us a like and subscribe. And also follow us on Instagram at the official PGW. We do have a raffle and a giveaway. So. Let's go ahead, Hunter, and let's go ahead and talk about the woodshed. I'm going to let you go ahead and go first. But Not a problem, sir. He's a good kid. He's just got to watch his language in front of the ladies. <laughs> I'll remind Kevin where he comes from. Okay, that sounds terrific. You use foul language in front of a lady. No, Daddy, no! Alrighty. Well, Leo, this, this week I'm not taking a particular person to the woodshed. I'm taking, I guess, a group or a an event to the woodshed that last play for the eagles was just an abomination okay i really thought that you know what the cowboys pulled with poor zeke getting pancaked into the ground was bad but you know they took jalen hurts right they're like jalen listen we know that you know we, we've got a few rubber bands and some elmer's glue holding your shoulder together but do you think you can launch that ball 73 yards down the field uh, they're only going to rush three and they're going to drop like eight into coverage. And Jalen was like, I don't know, coach. Maybe you think we could run some laterals and nobody thought that that was a good idea. I guess I personally, I would have made it spicy. I would have brought AJ Brown on like a reverse, had him pitch it to Miles Sanders or something, have him gun it down the field. This is the Super Bowl. You can't just throw no, no Boston college Hail Mary and pray anymore. You got to be inventive. Come on, guys, get me worked up here. All right, Leah. All right. Um, you know what? <laughs> For once, I'm actually going to agree with you on the woodshed <laughs> and actually finish it up with taking one particular individual. James Bradbury. I don't know how else to tell you. That when your quarterback is doing his job and delivering maybe the best offense he has all season for you to deliver your worst defense of the season in the most crucial play of the game, you gave somebody named Patrick Mahomes the opportunity to display more greatness by giving him more time on the clock. And by doing so, you deprived your team of the Super Bowl. The truth is, is that you should hang up your pads because for a minute of forgetting how to play defense, you decided that your team didn't matter, that you just wanted to have some fun because you thought you had it in the bag. 
You knew it was a 50-50 play. You knew that the ball was overthrown, but it didn't matter. You had to hang on somebody. You had to cuddle with him and take him out to dinner. Rather than just waiting till the clock struck zero, you decided that you wanted to hump the man's leg and get a holding call, which is ridiculous. You had absolutely no right to do that. You, sir, are the reason that they lost the Super Bowl. You should live with that. And honestly, I really hope you do learn from it. When some team decides that they not only want to bring you in, they say, hey, yeah, sure, James, you can come in with a $50 haircut because there's absolutely no way someone should pay you full price for doing a half job. All right? So thanks very much, James, for making me look bad and making yourself look even worse. Well said, Leo. Well said. Was that a little salty? Was that a little salty? A, a little <laughs> salty. A little salty. It's okay. <laughs> Just like you and everybody else on the Super Bowl broadcast took the Eagles, right. we understand that there is salt in tears. <laughs> it's all right. We live, we learn, we grow, and we move on. And speaking of moving on, we have to end tonight's broadcast on a high note where we get to tell you to enter for that raffle. Simply go ahead and have through and share with three friends at the official PGW on your Instagram and enter to win that Amex gift card. Also, don't forget to follow us on YouTube at pregame WP. We hope to see you there and we hope to see you next week, <laughs> including Dave. Hey, what about that? Yeah, man. Come on, Dave. Sniffles and everything. Dave's not here, man. <laughs> but it's all right. We're glad you can join us here. Thank you for listening. This has been your pregame one. See when we get back from Cuba. Say hi to Castro for me. We'll do.